Okay, my name is Vince Palco, and I'm going, I'm going to help you in this video today memorize anything. Okay, if you've seen my other video, How to Memorize the 13 Colonies, you'll know that that created a lot of buzz, a lot of controversy with some of the images I used. And, uh, uh, but no, nevertheless, people were getting amazing results from that. So I thought I'd come out with this video. Before I do, uh, this, this style, this technique can work on anyone. Can work on kids, can work on young adults, can work on adults, anyone. If you have a pencil, if you have a little bit of creativity, if you can doodle, that's all you need. You don't need to be a fine artist of any kind to do it. Um, before I get into the how-to part of this, I want to tell you a quick story of my daughter. She's 10 years old. First name is Georgia. And my ex and I went to her parent-teacher conference probably a month or two ago. And you got to understand, I have three daughters, and they're all very bright. And Georgia is more visual in nature, I would say. And when we went to the parent-teacher conference, the teacher was saying things like, um, you know, Georgia's doing good, but, you know, she's getting B's where her sisters are getting A's. And uh, the teacher's suggestion was maybe to go back through and check her answers on her page before she finishes up, sometimes she finishes too early, yada, yada, yada. So, I thought, interesting. So, basically, a few nights later, we're studying for her social studies test. And I'm reviewing it with her, and basically I say, I'm realizing she's just not getting it. She's just not getting the information. And it doesn't matter if she is essentially reviewing the stuff at the end of her test, if she's not getting it. And so, what I told her was, I told her a story of me. I played football at Bowling Green State University and I was an art major. And basically I would have to go to football all day long. And after football, I would have to go sit through a dark room for three hours and study art history slides of all these amazing artists. And I had no system for how to do this because I knew there's like, we went through dozens and dozens, there's like almost like a hundred of these different artists and we had to memorize them for this class. And I said, Georgia, she wasn't getting it. I said, you know what? You're visual like me. And school is only set up for a certain kind of brain, so we gotta do something unique, something different, in order to stimulate different parts of your brain so you get it. It's all memorization, that's all it is. That's all they're asking you to do is just regurgitate information. So what I told her what I did was, I took uh, Rubens, for example. He was an artist who, who created essentially robust women, plump women. And so I would draw a little plump woman next to his name as a way to remember all the different styles of, not the different styles, but his style of art. And then when we came to something abstract, an abstract artist, I would draw that an abstract kind of image next to that name. And so I did that and did that and basically achieved great success when I wanted to fall asleep after being so exhausted after football practice in college and then going to art history class. And uh, so she was like all ears. She heard, she, she, you could tell she was frustrated because she wasn't keeping up with her sisters. And so she was open to a new idea, a new technique. So if this is your kid, this is you, and you need to, and you're in college, you need to memorize information, you're in grad school, whatever it might be, use this technique. So she was in social studies. And she had, she was memorizing things like uh, the group of people with a, who was the largest and richest and ruled the empire in the South America. And so basically on that uh, study guide, we drew a picture of, hopefully you can see this. Oops. Just like an old fashioned bottle of ink, right? With gold spilling out of it. And these are like coins and stuff. Okay, so it looked like something like that. So when she came to that question, the answer was what? The Incas, see, Incas. Ink, bottle of ink with gold spilling out of it. Okay, so that was that question. Then there was another question where, um, who led the expedition uh, of the first ex Europeans to see the Mississippi River. So the next thing we drew was like in a boat, we drew a bottle of soda. This is really fine art. 
but you see you don't need fancy skills to do this so it's a bottle of bubbly soda and why is it soda in the river because the name man's name was Hernando de Soto okay so soda Soto that's his last name all she has to do is look for that name and he conquered the Mississippi River not conquered but um, he was the first to see it so you can get an idea for what we did with her studying and a real I'm kind of going on and on but you just gotta hear the whole story because it's amazing anyway I go to pick up my other daughter for gymnastics the other day, uh, well, a couple, no, it was the next day, and my daughter Georgia comes out to the car, she goes, Dad, 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 wait, before you go, I got something to tell you. I go, what, Georgia, we're kind of late. She goes, well, you know that test I was studying for? I said, yeah. She goes, I got 100% on it. I said, Georgia, nice. I go, how'd you get the grade so fast? She goes, well, my teacher came up to me. I was finishing up my test or I was going up to the near her desk and she goes, Georgia, come here, check this out. And uh, she showed me my paper and I got 100%. And I was so pumped. I said, Georgia, see, you can do this. And, and basically, you, you just need to stimulate the visual part of your brain in order to memorize it. Because it's a lot easier to em uh, uh, memorize images than it is words and all kinds of different things. And uh, so this is the piece of paper that she got, and there's the 100%. And so between my example of the art history class in college and George's example here, uh, 35 out of 35, and she never achieved that before. Uh, she would get B's and C's, like I said. So for you, uh, that's a quick tip, quick test. And the beautiful thing was I kind of left the room. I said, okay. Now that we've created a couple of these images, I want you to go and create something. So there, there's, there was one in here that was really cool. It was called uh, number six. Who was the leader of the first expedition to sail around the world? The answer was Ferdinand Magellan. Well, we live close to a roller coaster park here in northwest, northwest Ohio. And uh, one of the roller coasters was called the Magnum. Well, it is to this day. And so next to that question, she just drew a picture of a roller coaster, not my drawing, her drawing. And it was very basic, very simple, but it connected the dots for her that, that the answer to that question was Magellan, which is close to Magnum. And so school set up in a unique way. Is this good? Because will she retain it forever? I don't know. I think she might. If she sees that question or if she hears something in some kind of trivia, it's going to trigger Magnum at Cedar Point and she would probably get it. But you got to kind of use these techniques and these tips to help your kids get through school because school is set up to memorize. Just spit back a bunch of information to see how smart you are. So this is a unique tool to use and to benefit from and to get your kids through uh, high school, grade school, college, whatever it might be. Um, because not all brains are set up the same and if you have a kid that's struggling use this technique with them they may be more visual and and just do simple drawings and get them thinking creatively about their homework and studying for tests anyways hope you enjoyed this piece I have there might be more coming out in the future if you enjoyed it make sure you like down below comment on how it's helped you and your kids and or yourself Okay, all for now, and I may see you next time.